Thank you. I like cats. I don't like tables. Um, so I've been working on a little project to sort of basically try and get rid of tables out of uh, email coding. Uh, there's two sides of it. Um, some things we, we are using tables for now, which we need to, some things we don't need to. Um, so at the moment, sort of a central column layout, you need a table for that. Anything with a fixed sort of width section, you need a table for. Um, if you're doing multiple columns, you need tables for that. If you're changing the background, you need a table for that. You don't need tables for doing paragraphs of text, just use p tags. You don't need them for spaces. You could use, there's a number of things you could use, p tags as one of them. Uh, images, you don't need to wrap your images in tables. Lists, just use semantic code, it works fine. Um, buttons and stuff. Uh, mobile only code and interactive only code. If you've got a chunk of code which is only going to be seen on mobile or only going to be seen on clients that support interactivity, no need for tables in that. Um, because it's not going to be seen by Outlook. So this is sort of the standard layout I use for like a central column code. It's like a three table cell method. There's a few different ways of doing this. It's the one I use. Um, so they've got three table cells, uh, 600 pixel width uh, table cell in the middle, and then two on the outside which don't have a width, so they'll just scale automatically to center it. Um, and this works well in Outlook 2007. I'm just going to look at Outlook 2007 for now because we haven't got a lot of time. Um, but yeah, it works well. So if I wanted to do that with divs, um, it's a lot less code. It's much nicer code. It lots, makes a lot more sense. It's like pretty, but it doesn't really work. It's the, the content is stretched out. Um, you can see, although the h1 tag, the um, image tag, and the h2 tag are all nice and centered, they still look the same. They're fine. But the paragraph tags at the bottom are stretched out for the full width. Um, also, there's a, a line in the middle of it because it's not respecting the background color properly. So why do we want divs if they're such a pain in Outlook? Um, they're easier to manipulate, especially with like responsive layouts. If you've got all your content in table cells, trying to move that around onto mobile is a real pain. You have to like, keep things in the same rows, and you're very limited what you can do. With divs, you've got a lot more control about moving things around. Um, they're naturally accessible. We, we add um, role equals presentation uh, onto every table, or you should do if you're listening to Paul earlier. Um, Div, that makes a table semantically neutral. By default, divs are semantically neutral, so there's no need to add anything like that. So they just, they're just works. It's a lot less code, as you could see in the previous slide. And they inherit styles properly. So when you put a new table in, you have to like, you know, tell it what font you're using again, and all, things like that. Like divs just inherit code properly. So to make divs work in Outlook, um, I've been playing around with a few things. So if you, first of all, to get the width, to get it to respect the width, you put this MSO element frame width. 600 pixels or whatever width you want, and then that will constrain the div so it doesn't blow out to the full width of the email. Um, then, to, if you want to get tables nested inside that, because I still haven't quite got everything working, um, then you change that to MSO element power border div, so then you can nest content in it properly. Uh, to align that table center, because by default that's going to be a left aligned, do MSO element left center, so that'll put that 600 pixel column in the middle. And, and then anything below that is just going to float up next to it. So to stop that happening, you do MSO element wrap, no wrap beside. Um, and if you put all that together, that's what you get in Outlook. Um, and it looks pretty close to what we started with. Um, and actually what Outlook's doing when it takes this code, it's actually seeing the divs and it's converting them into, uh, it's converting into a table. So that's the code that Outlook sees when it um, displays that. There are still a few issues. If you, can, if you look closer, there's a very thin blue line around the outside of all the content. Um, I'm sure I got rid of that at some point. I can't remember what I did. I've been, trying, I've been like, banging my head against the wall. I can't really remember what I did to sort that out. Um, getting multiple columns inside that main content um, is, you know, and any sort of nested sections inside it is being a bit of a pain. It doesn't, you can't really nest this code inside itself properly. Um, Windows 10 mail strips styles from the body tag, which is very annoying. So you can see there's this like dark sort of charcoal gray sort of background on that. Um, that uh, is applied to the body tag. Uh, Windows 10 mail doesn't like that, so it will just strip it out. Everything else likes that. Um, I'll submit that one uh, over to the Outlook bugs. Um, and the background images, I haven't actually played around with this yet, but VML or otherwise doing background images it should be able to work, but I haven't had time to look into that yet. Um, so that's it. It's not, it's not finished. It's not production ready. So, but I want to share what I've got so far. 
Um, there's a link to a builder there that you can have a look at the code. Um, also, I've got a blog post which I'm about to tweet out so you can look into it. And I just want all of you to sort of have a look at it, take it apart, try and break it, try and fix it, try and get it working. Like, and like, hopefully, like, we can all work together to hopefully get off the table. Thank you. Uh,